Hi everybody, welcome to part two of our little art project. I'm Anne Riggs, uh, many of you will know me from uh, the work we've done together in our groups or here in my studio. Last week we started uh, the project based on some of these artworks that I was showing you from Nepal and from India. And you had a little task to do, which was to create the borders in readiness for part two. Thank you everyone who, who have done those borders and um, posted them on Facebook. It's been really great to see them and to, to see how families have been doing these projects together or um, just by yourself, you know, filling in some time whilst uh, we're all in this kind of strange virus situation. Uh, the next part of the project that we're going to do is concentrate on the really exciting bit, now you've had some practice, which is, the, is some life stories. So I thought this is a, this uh, particular picture, we're not going to copy it because we don't do that, but we use it for inspiration and I like this design of it because you can put, you know, four or five pictures uh, of something about yourself in it and you know you can do it in stages and it's quite manageable to do so the first thing you probably need to do is choose your topic what are you going to tell us about your story and your life so perhaps write down or think have a little think about that and then maybe think of four or five steps in that story so that you can uh, divide it up into to little segments. The next Another approach could be uh, how you structure your day. So it could be you get up in the morning, have your breakfast. Well, in my case, I can't have my breakfast unless I feed the cats first because there's no peace in the household. So the cats always um, about the first thing I do. Um, another approach could be about a celebration, you know, st things about your life that might be involving lots of other people. So it could be someone's birthday party or a wedding or something like, uh, like in this picture. You could then talk about what are some of the steps or what are some of the activities that went on uh, as part of that celebration. We're not just focusing on what's going on now because in that case, we wouldn't be doing anything about much seeing our friends or doing things together as a community. So we can think outside this um, two weeks or however many weeks it is that we've been confined to barracks. So use your imagination. Tell the story that you want to tell. For some of you that have stories that are a bit trickier to tell, you know, maybe this is an opportunity to be able to do that in a really nice way to just tell some of those stories using pictures. Another way that you might like to think about um, telling your story is like picking a subject. So this one, I think I've shown you this one last week, was about doing the pottery in Nepal. And so it tells all the steps about that one task. So getting the clay ready, making things on the wheel, drying things and preparing things. Uh, ready for the kiln and here they all are in the kiln so that's and there's lots of different people involved in that um, so you could think about a task that's got many parts to it um, I bet a lot of you are doing a bit more cooking than you normally do so it could be about cooking a cake you know what are the steps of cooking a cake or cooking a dinner I started to show you these pictures last week because I, they're really nice way to start painting and for those of you that don't feel like you've got really strong painting or drawing skills they're they're quite inspirational because they do tell the story but they're not getting that caught up with getting things right and I know some of you get a bit anxious about whether something's in perspective or it, it looks real but these things are they're very successful as paintings because there's something about them that is very real and a lot about them that is not. And so you can see from the pictures that I've, I'm putting up that 
they spend a lot of time on the decoration, so on the patterns on the clothes or the, the, the decorations in the, in the background. And they, they enjoy the colours, putting colours together. They're not too caught up in um, getting the facial features that correct, are they? You can see that they've got very big eyes and very strange noses and many of the people's skins are very unrealistic. I don't think I've ever seen someone with a purple face or a blue face. And so that gives you some license to just do things with a little bit of freedom, which, um, you know, it's a, really, it's a really good thing to be able to give yourself and to not be allowing that, um, you know, that judgmental voice saying it's not good enough or it doesn't look right. Or it so that this, this kind of approach that I'm offering you is a way into doing your paintings without getting too hung up about all the, you know, the realism thing. For some of you that have a few more art skills, you might want to bring something else to it. And what I was thinking that you might be interested in, in is thinking about uh, a point of view, where you're seeing your picture from. So you could take this picture, for example. This is a, a mother and a child shopping in a, fashion shop in Paris, I think, France somewhere. So you could, if this was your story, you could, you could be the mother, you could be the child, you might even be the person owning the shop. You might be the person across the road who's observing this. So you can choose how you're going to tell your story by where you're standing. Another one I'd like to show you it's a beautiful painter that uh, we look at. I, I love this guy, um, Edgar Degas, who's um, a French painter from the Impressionist, but he's very interesting because he often has very unusual points of view. And so you can see here in this picture of, uh, at the ballet that we've got someone really close up. So if you were doing a picture similarly uh, about your life story, you know, maybe this is you looking at something, or it could be the dancers looking at you, or you know, whatever your story is, or someone outside the picture looking at you. So it's kind of interesting to think about, you know, wh which way you're going to tell us your story. Another aspect about storytelling in art that I really love, and it's what I like about Degas as well, is that sometimes they only tell part of the story because, like they've got here, they've got, we've got two figures here together. You can't see their faces, so we don't need to get caught up in the detail again. And we've, we've got a bit of somebody else here. So when, this, when the picture is a little bit cut off like that, it's not because they've run out of paper. It's because it's telling us that there's more to the story than what we're just seeing. And it makes us wonder, oh, what's going on here? So when you cut a little bit out, it, it, it makes you think, oh, there's more of the story happening to the side. So you might want to think about that, too, when you're thinking about how you're going to tell us your life story. Well, not necessarily your life story, but the story that you're going to tell us. So the last thing that I wanted to just draw your attention to was the paper. You might have some photocopy paper or some cartridge paper. You might have some coloured paper around. I've got these ones. Uh, these, I think these were from scrapbooking and... Um, they come in all sorts of different colours, so they, they can be quite a nice starting point too if you've got some coloured paper. So the final thing that you might want to think about before you start is the shape of your paper. So rectangular might be where you go, square, you could have just the photocopy paper which is A4. If you could set your task, you might be able to do one per day. And, and you can do more than five and, and actually um, I've done these projects as community projects and I've been teaching on um, Bachelor of Community, uh, community Mental Health and, and I've worked in India and Nepal and rather than one person do the whole thing they did it together so it could tell the story of, of how, like, um, how, people, how people live together so if you're in a family you might put different things of um, what goes on in the family, different different members of the family, parts of their story. 
I hope um, I hope this gives you some ideas about how you can approach the next part. I'm just wanting to inspire you with some ideas so that you can just um, go, oh, that sounds a good idea, but I'd like to do it my way because I'd really like to encourage your creativity. I want you to have a, a really enjoyable time and maybe it's even more fun when you do it with somebody else. I think I've really noticed that when I've been teaching this, that uh, there's a lot of fun in actually working these things out with somebody else. It's also a lovely thing to do by yourself. I love just uh, getting into my studio and putting some music on and having some really quiet time and just doing my painting. And maybe that's what you really enjoy doing too. I hope you have a really lovely week trying this and giving yourself a little bit of time just to play around with your creativity and maybe with some materials that you've, had, you've got at home and you haven't had time to, to try them out or to get to know them and to, to practice them. Sometimes, you know, you have to do a painting a few times before it feels right for you and that's fine. Try to just allow that process to unfold and, and let it be an enjoyable process. If you'd like to post up some pictures about what you're doing, I'd love to see them. And if you don't, that's fine. I'll just have to imagine it. And so next week I'm going to show you how we can put it all together. And until then, I hope you have a really great week. And do lots of things that make it fun and enjoyable and creative, if you can. Okay, see you.